We say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All glory be yes, unto you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We bless you. We worship you. We worship you. We lift your name high. Lift your name high in Jesus' Lord. mighty name. Amen. And all the saints say loud, Amen. Amen. Jam your hands unto the Lord. Jam your hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want you to sit this morning with joy in your heart and smile in your face. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time we serve a living God. This morning I want to give thanks again to God for the opportunity he has given to all of us to be in his house this morning all glory be unto him and i want to thank the choirs for the marvelous songs worship that they took us through the praise may god bless you and i believe that this service will be a service that will restructure somebody's life that will change somebody's life that will bring somebody to the door that is open this week for that person in Jesus mighty name this morning God has given me, given me a message a message that I've entitled the power of choice the power of choice the power of choice hallelujah Hallelujah. When we talk about power, we talk about very important thing that the Bible talked about powers. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The Bible says we wrestle against powers. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against principalities. Let me read from the scripture. The Bible says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Underline that word there in your Bible powers against the ruler of the darkness of this age against the spiritual oath of wickedness in the heavenly places today I want to treat on powers and the power I want to treat on is the power of choice you see sometimes when we talk about power we don't look at we look at power as a mystical thing we look at power as witchcraft power we look at power only on the marine spirit we look at power on the ancestral spirit we look at power on areas that we are ignorant of but this morning i want to talk to you consigning the number one power the Bible is talking about. The number one power. The first power that establishes man is the power of choice. Is the power of choice. Are you getting me? The power of choice, excuse me. The power of choice is what God used to establish the earth. When God created man and woman, He gave them the right of choice. He gave them the right of choice. And is that choice 
that creates the law, L-A-W, the law that we have today that governs heaven and earth. The most dangerous thing you can ignore on earth is the power of choice. The power of choice lies death and life. Lies blessing and curses. The power of choice. I don't want you to be ignorant because many of us are in bondage today. We are in prison today because of our choices. Sometimes we want to blame it to another person. Sometimes we want to push it that someone has bewitched us. No one has bewitched you. Most of the times, 95, 95% of your choices establishes your downfall or your rising. Don't be ignorant. No one is doing you because you have the capacity to keep yourself moving. You have the capacity to keep yourself stagnated. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That is the truth. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You don't wrestle against your brothers and sisters. You wrestle within yourself. The power of choice that is inside of you. Let me tell you. Choice is a physical action that generates from the inner man. Which means that the inner man takes the decision first and the actions are released in the physical by you. So whatever thing your will has established, your mind, your subconsciousness have established, that is the choice you take. Look at your neighbor say, everything you have taken as a choice is consciously done. That is why you don't push it and when you make mistakes, you say it's Satan. Where is Satan? Satan is not a personality. Satan is in your consciousness, your subconsciousness, your mind. Lies the tree of good and evil. So you don't push blame that Henry is doing you. You don't push blame that Monica is doing you. You don't put blame that Maria is doing you. You don't put blame that Abraham is doing you. He never chose for you. You have the power of choice. We wrestle against principalities and powers. And the greatest power that you wrestle with is the wrestle of the power of choice. It's not witchcraft. Before you are bewitched, there's a choice that you have taken. Before you are charmed, there is a choice you have taken. I come to you this morning as a prophet of change, as a man that have come with words that will change your week entirely because of the choice you will take this week. Happiness is by choice. Sadness is by choice. Anger is by choice. Calmness is by choice. What have you chosen to be? What have you chosen to live on? What have you chosen to rule your life? Let us not pretend to ourselves that someone is doing us. Nobody. You either do yourself and somebody increases it by doing you. The speed one takes in life is by choice. If you want to take a slow speed, is by choice. You want to be stagnated, is by choice. But God has given us the power. 
power to choose. Please, media, give me Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Englishmen call it 30. We Africans call it 30. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 to 20. Look at it. The Bible says, today, don't forget, every day we see is, the, is today. You cannot see tomorrow, you cannot see yesterday. Am I talking to you? You cannot see tomorrow, you cannot see yesterday. So you can always see your today. So he said, today I have given you the choice between life and death. I have given you the power of choice. Between life and death. Between blessings and curses. Now I call upon heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you will choose life. So that you and your descendants might live. The choice you take today, if you take death, your descendants dies. And when we are talking about death, we are not talking about dying as a physical man. We are talking about everything you put your hands to do dies. You plan something, it dies. You grow a business, it dies. Some of our Things that are dying today is not coming from us. It's coming from generations that have come before us. And anyone you choose wrongly, it will affect the generation to come that are your children's children. There is a power we call the power of choice that the devil has so manipulated that have kept many people stagnated, poor, struggling and suffering today. Do you know that the choice you take to take that loan that is keeping you in debt is not the choice of another person, it's your choice. The debt you are struggling to pay that makes you not to pay your tithes is your choice. Am I talking to sense in the house? Christian, let me tell you, I am not called to come and manipulate anyone. I've come to preach the word of God. I've come to deliver the word of God. And anyone that does not want to take the word of God, let the person stay stagnated. But the word of God is the word that will push you to another level. Do you know that rumor moves more than the truth? Do you know that gossip moves more than the truth? So nobody needs to tell you the truth. You have the truth in you and you have the lies in you. This morning, I wake you up from sleep. This morning, I wake you up from sleep. I said this morning, I wake you up from sleep. Wake up, you that sleep it. Wake up, you that are ignorant. All ignorant people, they never move forward. No matter how educated they are, they never move forward. Because they always want people to take their decision. Decision is a consciousness. It's in the consciousness of man. It's something that comes inside of you. It's not what people tell you to do. The power of choice. We are not fighting. We are not wrestling against our brothers. We are not wrestling against our sisters. We are wrestling against the power of choice. Instead of us. How do you choose what you do? Can I have two people in the house? Can I have two people? In? Come, brother, come. Come, the wife, come. Come. The power.
power of choice. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, let us not play anky panking to our lives. Who told you what you want now? What you are wearing? Who told you to wear it? Huh? Who told you what you wear now? Who told you to wear it? It's yourself. Okay, look around. Did you take a better choice? You took a better choice. God bless you. Go and sit down. That is the power of choice. That is the power of choice. She can move freely because she took the best choice that she knows that she can put on. And he put on the best choice that he knows that he can put on. If you enter here with the national flag colors, it's your choice. Yellow top, red trouser, black shoe, or blue shoe. It's your choice. That when you come inside and look at everybody, you find yourself different. Even you can interpret that you have taken the wrong choice. It's not so. Choice is made from your consciousness. It's not about the person that you are thinking that is doing you. It's you that is doing yourself. God bless you, sir. I want to tell you, there are three choices that stagnate you or make you. Let me tell you the truth. If you don't take any choice, it's a choice. If you don't choose anything, it's a choice. If you don't choose anything, it's a choice. If you choose positively, it's a choice. If you choose negatively, it's a choice. If you don't have anything to choose, and you allow people to choose you, you are a slave or in prison or in bondage. It's only slaves that don't have choice. It's only slaves that don't have choice. God has made us to know that there are two choices, life and death. He said, but if it's me, on your behalf, I want you to choose life. He never forced you. God's will is God's will. And most time we go out of God's will to do our will. It doesn't match. Because your will must always be in God's will. Church, it's not time to play. Destiny is waiting for us. Eternity is waiting for us. One of the things you will stand before God is judgment. And I'm going to show you now. The power of choice is what established these three things. Judgment. Vindication. And reward. Look at your neighbor say, it's your choice that establishes your judgment. It's your choice that establishes your vindication. Vindication means to be set free. It's your choice that brings you reward. Look at your neighbor again. Say it's your choice that brings you reward. It's your choice that establishes blessing in your life. Your choice is so powerful. You don't need to blame anyone for your choice. The shoe you are putting on is your choice. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you the truth. And we read it from the scripture in the book of Deuteronomy that heaven and earth are weakness to the choice we make. 
Deuteronomy 30, from 19 to 20, we read. Heaven and earth. They are weakness of every choice you make. To love or to hate. To lie or to tell the truth. To gossip or to give good news. To accuse people or to praise them. It's a choice. You want to appreciate those that have helped you in the past. It's a choice. You want to curse them. It's a choice. But what I've come to tell you, there is judgment by the choice you take. There is vindication by the choice you take. And there is, there is reward by the choice you take. So you are judged. You are vindicated or you are rewarded by your choice you make. Can you give me Matthew 18, 18? It's the same thing as Matthew 16, 19. But they put it in different way. Can you give me a new translation? New translation. New living translation. Matthew 18, 18. Look at it. He said, I tell you the truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Please look at that word very well. The statement very well. Whatever you forbid, underline that word forbid. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Now, that is the same word in the New King James Version. It says whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you want lose on earth is lose in heaven. Now, let me tell you, if you don't have any choice to lose anything, nothing lose. Look at your neighbor say, nobody can, can lose anything for you. Heaven and earth as weakness it. He said, whatever you he didn't say whatever them, whatever you as a person. So whatever you never permit or whatever you permit stands and whatever you don't permit cannot stand. Theory of life. Principles of life. I was watching a kickboxing yesterday. This kickboxing program yesterday the girl was coming in and the girl was saying I am the best I am the best it's an American young lady fighting a Chinese lady and the Chinese lady is the the Chinese lady is the champion putting a bet and the, the young girl was coming out saying I am the best I am the best. And she was all saying it. I am the best. I am the best. I am the best. She entered the ring. She was saying, I am the best. I am the best. Yesterday. And it was not even up to two minutes. She brought the champion down. She started crying. And they asked her, the commentator asked her, he said, you said you are the best. He said, yes, I am the best. What you speak to your life is what stayed in your life. <laughs> what you say to your destiny is what establishes. That is what the Bible says. What you prohibit is prohibited. What you forbid is forbidden. Can we see how Amplified put it? Let's see how Amplified put it. Let's see how Amplified put it. I believe after today, 
every day of your life will produce fruit for you. By the choice you are going to take today, every day of your life will produce. It's not witchcraft. People are thinking that it's witchcraft. It's not manipulation. It's not witchcraft. When you see people get reward, they get reward by the choice that they make. It's not by manipulation, by the choice that they make. Look at Matthew 16, 19. Look at what he says. He said, I will give you the keys, which is authority, of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, in brackets, he said, forbid, declare to be improper, and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. So which means this one said and whatever you lose permit, declare lawful on earth will have what already been lost. So whatever you don't declare cannot come to you. Whatever you don't declare whatever you don't prohibit whatever you don't sanction can never be sanctioned out of your life. That thing you fear will always come. But that thing you chase away will always not come. The Bible says in Psalm 23 verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. But if you are walking through your troubles, you are walking through troubling times, you are walking through storms, and you are afraid, the storm will swallow you. The storm will swallow you. Children of God, let us not pretend that there is one supernatural thing against you somewhere. No supernatural thing against you is somewhere. The ancestral powers we are talking about is the tree of knowledge of good and evil inside of you. That is the ancestral power we are talking about. Ancestral power is not an image anywhere. Is that thing your father have transferred to you as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is in every man. That is the ancestral powers. That is the power of choice. What the choice your father have taken, is it the choice you will take today? Let me tell you the truth. My brothers and sisters, you have to make a choice. We are going to get there. The friend that you call best friend in primary school, Papa Gonzo, they are not your best friend today. The best friend, you think that your best friend in secondary school, they are not your best friend today. Even some of the best friends you have in the university today, they are not your best friend. Friendship is not by force. Look at your neighbor. Say, friendship is not by force. Sit down. God bless you. By the time I finish this message, you will know that the power of choice has stronghold on us. We carry it everywhere we go because everywhere, even for you to be seated here, is your choice. Brother Abraham, did anybody force you to come to church this morning? Did anyone force you to come to church this morning? Mama Ita, did anyone force you to come to church this morning? Papa Jembe, did anyone force you to come to church this morning? It's by your choice that you are here. You can be somewhere else and it, that somewhere else will also be your choice. There are many people in Futa and Veg now looking for popo, looking for papaya. Pi looking for lemon juice, looking for... They are there. But you chose to be here. There are some seated with tailors. The clothes they want to wear next week. They, don't, they didn't come to church. They are seated with tailors. It's their choice. And there are tailors that are sewing this morning trying to complete people's clothes. And they are not in church. 
It's their choice. Am I talking to somebody in the house? Power of choice. Don't say it's the devil. It's not the devil. It's the knowledge that you have inside of you in your, con- your subconsciousness. That tree of knowledge of good and evil is inside of you. So you carry God and evil. And that is why the Bible says in Deuteronomy 30, it says, choose God, God choose life. And choose good. May the devil not have upper hand in your life. Some of us we are looking for the devil. Where is the devil? The devil is not a personality. The devil is a character. The devil is an habit. Principalities. Some of you are looking at principal, you are looking for principalities. They are inside of you. Some people can dress half naked and come inside church. It's their choice. Am I, am I talking to you? When from the door people start to mock you and people start to laugh you, they give you now rapper to talk. <laughs> rapper chitenge. They give you to take it to cover. It's your choice. And it's not the choice of the church. Choice is so deadly that it can give you life or it can kill. Hallelujah. 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 These are the things. I'm trying to make you understand what have you prohibited in your life? What have you declared null and void in your life? What have you have you forbidden? What have you forbidden? The Bible says what you forbid on earth he said automatically it has been already Amplify said in bracket already forbidden in heaven. Because your choice is weakness by heaven and earth. So the moment you take a choice, you get pregnant for another man, it's your choice. But it has judgment. It has judgment. It has vindication. And it has reward. You don't tell heaven. Just let us remove God here now first. Are you getting me? Sometimes you say God is wicked. Remove God first. Because God said heaven and earth is a weakness. Is it not so? Heaven and earth is a weakness by your choice. Sometimes we say, can God forgive? No. Because judgment must reign by your choice. There must be judgment by your choice. And you will be vindicated by your choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God help us this morning. I say may God help us this morning. Hallelujah. I want us to go into Luke chapter 22 verse 40 to 43. And verse 46. I will talk about this. Then I will give you the three different types of. Of of reward that comes from. Look at Luke chapter 22 verse 40. The Bible says. When he came to the place. He said to them. Pray. That you may not enter into temptation. He came and said pray. That you may not enter into temptation. Look at verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Verse 42. Saying, Father, if it is you, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. 
Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Verse 43. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Why? Because heaven have witnessed it. He is on earth. So heaven witnessed it. And what did heaven witness? What did heaven witness? He said, not my will, but your will. Jesus was in a situation for him to say, let this cup pass away from me. Every man have mandates and calling. Every man and woman, you have an assignment in this world. You cannot run away from it. Are you in the assignment that God wants you to do? Or are you pretending not to know your assignment? Then you are not human. After today, go ask God your assignment. Jesus had an assignment. And his assignment was terrible, was sorrowful. And he went to pray. Look at verse 46. The same people he told in verse 40. Why not you pray? Because of temptation. Look at it. He said. Then he said to them. Why do you sleep? Rise and pray. Least you enter into temptation. He said it again. He said it in 40. He said it in 46. Look at your neighbor. Say to pray. Is by choice. When we say all leaders, Oden leaders, leaders of groups come to pray every Monday, intercessors. Some of you, you will be at home and say, I'm tired. Let me tell you, the prayer you are praying is not for Henry. The prayer is you are praying is for temptation not to overcome you. So it was your choice to sleep. How many hours you sleep in a day is your choice. If you want to sleep the whole day, it's your choice. Jesus never forced them. But he told them, be careful, pray, that you don't fall into temptation. Look at your neighbor say, coming to church is a choice. You know, I always tell you, if I have five people, I will still preach with, you know, I will still preach with the same, the same even force I'm using to preach. <laughs> because that is my calling, to preach the gospel. We had two or three are gathered. The same energy, I will use it to preach. Am I talking to you? It's a choice. So people will look at two and three. They say, no, I cannot speak. Then they will not start to talk small, 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 small. Chain. Be yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, be yourself. And it's a choice to be yourself. My Bible tells me that Jesus withdrew from them. He said, Jesus, do what? We drew from them. Because he saw that these ones, they are sleeping. He withdrew from them and he went to pray his prayer. If somebody don't want to pray, you, don't look at them. Your choice is your choice. You want to look at them and follow them, then you will never pray. That is why many of us, 99% of human beings, fall into temptations that they cannot overcome because they lack prayers. They lack prayers. They cannot prohibit something. They cannot declare something. They cannot, they cannot wave something. They cannot destroy anything. For anything to be destroyed and, and prohibited is by prayer. 
You don't go around and leave, tell people, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. All those short, short prayers, it does not work. Emergency prayer does not work. Start to pray from today so that when emergency comes, you overcome it. The short prayer can do it. Am I talking to saints? Three things that happens to our choice. Number one, say judgment. Say judgment. Three things that happens to human beings in life by the choice they make. Number one is judgment. Can you give me Psalm 7 verse 8? Psalm 7, I'm going to look at it in New King James Version and Amplified. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, The Lord shall judge the peoples. The Lord shall do what? Judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. Integrity within me. So now, integrity is a decision inside that releases the choice you make. So if you don't have integrity in the inside, you cannot make a right choice. So first, there must be integrity in the inside that releases the choice you make in the physical. Choice is an action, a physical action that you make as a man, when I say man, man's decision comes from the brain. And the brain has five sense organs. I'll talk about it later. Let me finish what I'm talking about. So, judgment comes from the, from the choice you make. That is why if I take a right judge, if I take a right choice, Anyone that judges me fails because I've taken a right choice. Hello? I've taken a right choice. When we wanted to build this place, we had no money. But I stood and I said, God, the hand you used to start with Zerubbabel, you use it also in Eris, in Eris situation. I stood on Zerubbabel and I, I stood on the declaration of Zerubbabel and I stood on it and we got here. It's not, this thing is not by man's power. It's divine. My language, the, the adage in my language is onye kwe shie kwe. Onye kwe shie kwe. Whatever thing you agreed on, heaven answers it. God himself answers it. No matter how big, cumbersome that thing is, no matter how large it is, mighty it is, if you agree that this is what you want, God will establish it for you. It takes faith to get to where you are going. And it takes faith to choose. It takes faith to choose. Look at your neighbor. Say, it takes faith to choose. So judgment can come by your wrong decision that comes from your heart or your right decision that also comes from your heart. Amen. Am I talking to people? Number two, vindication. Three things that happen to man by their, decision, by their decision or their choice. Number one is judgment. Number two is vindication. The word vindication, let me, let me break it down so that you know what vindication is all about. The word vindication means for God to defend you, for heaven to defend you. Another word synonymous to it is for you to be acquitted. He said, they will always gather. Eh? 
but not for the righteous. They will always gather, but not for the righteous. So if they gather against you for doing the right thing, the Bible says heaven will acquit you. And that is why you find out many people that accuse me, that talk about me, that don't know me, they say different things about me. They are going down and I'm rising. I'm shining. And what keeps me shining? Vindication. What keeps me smiling, happy, without sickness? Vindication. The choice you take vindicates you. If you take the right choice, it vindicates. The word vindication means to set free. To set free. For heaven to set you free. No matter the accusation they give on you or the label you on, it will, it will not tarry. In the process of time, vindication will come. I speak to many of you that have been accused. God will vindicate you. Heaven will vindicate you. I say God will vindicate you. Heaven will vindicate you. They cannot give you a label that is not yours. They do a tongue and put the tongue on the head of Jesus and they press it. He brought out blood. And they said, you said, you are the king of the Jews. He still said, yes, you have said it. You said it. I didn't say it. You already proclaimed me the king of the Jews. Acquittance. Pain don't last. Pain don't last. Pain don't last. Pain don't last. Every bet you give comes with pain. Every vision comes with pain. But if it's a right vision, God vindicates you. When my wife had the first baby, she was shouting in the hospital, shouting, I will never do it again. I will never do it again. I will never do it again. After that, did she do it? She still did. And that's why we have the children we have. Because God will vindicate you because it's a right to have a child. Am I talking to saints in the house? Can you give me Proverbs 26? Or Psalm, sorry. Psalm 26, verse 1, verse 4, verse 8. Let me deal with this. When we talk about vindication, we talk about revenge. When God revenge your enemy, he revenge on your behalf. Why must God vindicate you? Why must God vindicate you? Can you give me Amplified first? Yes. Look at it. The Bible says, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, my decision from the inside. Eh? Don't forget, integrity is in the inside. He said, for I have walked in my integrity. I have in the, have what trusted the Lord, relied on the Lord, trusted the Lord, confidently in the Lord. I've trusted him without waving and I shall not sleep. So for God to vindicate you, you have to trust in the Lord. You have to do what? You have to trust in the Lord. Can you give me verse 1 first? Give me verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. Look at verse 1. He said, Okay, I've read verse 1. Give me verse 4 now. Verse 4. He said, I do not sit with deceitful and unethical or worthless men. Hey! 
I talking to somebody? He said, I do not sit down and gossip with deceitful, unethical, or worthless men, nor seek companionship with pretenders, self righteous hypocrites. My brothers and sisters, you kill yourself when you are an hypocrite. You destroy yourself. You cannot make it. That is where God vindicates. If you stay around people that are hypocrites, people that are pretenders, you pretend to love somebody and truly you don't love that person. God vindicates the person and destroys you because there must be judgment either way of the choice that you take. Continue in hypocrisy. Continue in pretense. It's your choice to pretend that you love God. It's your choice to pretend that you love Bishop Henry. And behind, you are hypocrite. Do you know that many husbands pretend that they love their wives? That many wives pretend that they love their husband? And they remain in a troublesome marriage for many years. Pretending. And after 20 something years, 15 years, they still divorce. Pretense cannot take you anywhere. It stops you at the gate of eternity. I come with a revival message this morning. The Bible says, those that have ears, let them hear the word the God, what the Lord is saying. Can you give me King James, New King James version of it? Can you give me New King James version of it? Proverbs 26, verse 1. Let us see this translation, how it puts it. Hallelujah. Am I talking to saints in the house? May the Lord change you this morning. Look at it. He said, Is it proverb? Give me verse 4. Proverb 26, verse 4. He said, Do not answer a fool according to his fury. Least you also be like him. Least you also be like him. Not all words that you respond to. Not all words that you respond to. Give me verse 8. Give me verse 8. Give me verse 8. Like one who binds a stone in a sling is he who gives honor to a fool. Can you give me amplify again? Proverb, uh, Psalm, sorry, Psalm 26. Psalm 26. Psalm 26. I'm not getting what, oh yes. Psalm 26. Give me verse 8. Verse 8. Look at it. Verse 8 says, Lord, I have love the habitation of your house. I have loved the habitation of your house. Why is vindicated? Because he loved the church. I have loved the habitation. I have loved staying in the house of God. Not jumping around. I have loved the habitation of your house. And the place where your glory dwells. The place my testimonies have come from. Not when God gives you testimony, you go and give it somewhere else. These are the areas God can vindicate you. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. We are in the age of the Holy Spirit, not the age of prophecy. We are in the age of the Holy Spirit. Jesus went. He said, 
I will leave the Holy Spirit with you. It's not bad. The second coming is not here. The Holy Spirit is still existing. It's not a time of prophecy. It's not a time of prophets. It's a time of the Holy Spirit. Don't give prophet the season of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. Not prophet will comfort you. Holy Spirit will comfort you. Holy Spirit will teach you. Even as I'm talking right now, the Holy Spirit will be telling you more interpretation of what I'm saying. It's the time of the Holy Spirit. Don't give it to any prophet. We don't have major prophet these days. We have the Holy Spirit operating in our system. And that is why all this corona and all these things are existing today. Because we have left God and give man the glory. That is why you find out the most, the most affected people or set in the world today are the church. The church has been locked down for many years now coming. More than one year now. And when the church locked down, the mindset of people are locked down. They are rejected. I refuse to be locked down. Number three. Reward. Blessings. Don't forget I said there are three things that happens to a man by the choice they take. Three things that happen to a man by the choice they take. Number one is judgment. Number two is vindication. Number three is reward. Reward is blessings. Can you give me Psalm 18 verse 20? Give me from New Living Translation and Amplified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Choice come when you face two possibilities. Sometimes I say two opposing possibilities. That is when you take choice. If you don't have possibilities, there's no choice. But I will, I will say that again. Look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 20. It says, the Lord reward, the Lord rewarded me for doing right. He restored me because of my innocence. Clean hands. Wherever you see innocence, it means clean end. And you know what mama always preached in this church, Pastor Maria? He said, keep your hands clean. So when they say keep your hands clean, actually the interpretation of keep your hands clean is be innocent in every choice that you take. Be innocent. Can you give me amplified? Let's see how amplified put it. That is the third thing that happens to our choices. The Bible says, the Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness. Mortal character and moral character. Underline that word in your Bible, moral character, spiritual integrity. Decision from the inside. According to the cleanliness of my hands, he has rewarded me. According to the cleanliness, that is, in the other version, he said, innocent. So in this one, he said, the cleanliness in my hands. May your hands be clean before the Lord. Heaven and earth, weaknesses, your choice. Reward cannot come if you are not clean. Do you know you cannot hide dirty? Do you know you cannot hide dirty? If you are a dirty person, it will show. If it does not show behind, behind your ears, it will show by the side of your leg. If it does not show by your leg, it will show on your neck where your cloth does not cover. If it does not show, it will show when you 
women, when you take the pen, some people now leave the pen inside the air. Deadness does not hide. When you see men start pulling their shoe and putting outside, know that their source is dirty. Their stocking is dirty. They need it washed or replaced. If you are dirty, no matter the perfume you put on your handpicks, eh, that dirty will kill the perfume. Am I talking to you? May your hands be clean before the Lord. May your choice be right before the Lord. I say, may your choice be right before the Lord. Many people have wished me, wish, wished me to fail, but they don't see me fail because I've not done them anything. I have me, Bishop Eri, I've not done them anything. So I cannot fail. My hands are clean. Vindication. Reward. May it be so in your life. May it be so in your life. Those that want you down, they will be down. Those that want you to fail, they will fail. Those that speak about your downfall, they will, they will be the one to fall with their back. I want to conclude. The Bible says in Osea, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Because we have not chose the right knowledge, we perish. Look at what the Bible says. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. You have rejected knowledge, which means you have not chosen the right knowledge. I will also reject you from being priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. As I also will forget your children. May your children not be added to your sin. May your children be, be separated from your sin. That's why a child comes home fail. The father will say, it's your mother. The mother will say, it's your father. They will be arguing in the house. Because the failure of the child is from the parents. Teach a child the way the child will grow. Teach a child the way that child will grow. It's a choice to teach your children. And it's a choice to come back from work and never ask of your child. It's a choice. That is why you find out some parents, when they want to travel, the children are jumping, rejoicing. They will just go to the mother. Daddy is traveling for one week. Hey! Hooray! They are happy because the father is nothing in the house for them. My brothers and sisters, in conclusion, there are three ways you can exercise your choice. And I'm going to use Adam and Eve to give example, then I conclude this morning. The power of choice. How do you exercise it? And how have we seen it exercised in the Bible? The choice of Samson was Delilah. The father tried to speak. The mother tried to speak. But the choice of Samson was who? Delilah. What choice have you made that is killing you? 
Do you know that your choice can betray you? Your choice can betray you. Number one. What you feed your brain on matters a lot. Number one. What you feed your brain on matters a lot. Do you know that the brain controls five things in this world? Your high to see, your ear to hear, your nose to smell, your body to feel. My brothers and sisters, this was exactly what brought Eve and Adam down. I reverse it because Eve brought it first, Adam followed. Can you give me Genesis chapter 2? I'm in conclusion. I will give you three points in conclusion. Look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. The Bible says, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Edom and Edom to tend and keep it. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. Every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. Choice. Look at verse 17. Say, but the tree of the knowledge not apple. Some of you, our old pastors, priests, they teach us that it's apple that they ate. Don't make mistake, they never ate any apple. Knowledge. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, choice is for you to eat it or for you not to eat it. It's not so. But the rules have been made. The rules have been established. The rules have been established. But do you know in Genesis chapter 3 do you know what happened? The Bible says the first thing The first choice that the woman took was communication. The woman decided to communicate with an enemy. The Bible says in chapter 3 verse 1, it says, the, the serpent is the most cunning animal. And he came. And communicate. Who do you communicate with? Who do you stay with? Who do you stay with? Who do you communicate with? Many of us will communicate with unbelievers. That will always tell you that there is no God. And you still have that person as best friend as a Christian. You will be every day. You be, look, let me tell you, you cannot defeat Satan. Satan is inside. It's not a physical thing. Am I talking to saints? You cannot defeat Satan. It's a culture that is inside of us. It's a knowledge that is inside of us. She gave a ear, number two. She gave her ear. So it was a choice to listen. Because she couldn't have she, she she could not have listened. So she really gave her ear to listen. Number three, the Bible says, and she found the fruit, the tree, pleasant for food. 
the eyes. He found the food. He found the, 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 the tree as pleasant. Then she felt, no, let me do it. The moment she did it, she was out of the wheel. God's, God has given us a wheel. And we cannot carry our wheel against his wheel. And that was what drove them from the garden. What is your wheel? Ask your neighbor, say, what is your wheel? Your wheel is your choice. 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 But every will that is established is established by the will of God. That was what Jesus said in the garden. He said, oh Lord, not my will, but your will be done. May the will of God be done in your life today. May the will of God be done in your life today. I said, may the will of God be done in your life today. May you not pretend to life. May you not pretend to life. May you not be hypocrite to life. May you not destroy your destiny. May you not destroy your destiny. God has given you talents. God has given you creativity. May your choice not kill the talent of God inside of you. May your choice not destroy your talent. Do you know that there are many good singers that took the choice to sing in the world? With, what, what, what's, that, what's that lady called? The one that died? Who's Livingston? She had the choice to sing for her church or to sing for the world. But there's destiny that always catch up on people. The moment you cut off from your destiny, which is the will of God, you pay for it. Michael Jackson was created a beautiful human being, handsome human being, handsome human being. But it was a, it was a choice that he wants to look like a woman. The same choice. Killed him. What is your will? What choice? This is not bewitchment. Nobody can bewitch you without your decision. In my language, in an adage, we say, Oh, my lay. Oh, my lay. God forbid if it is a bewitchment, you have the right to say, God forbid. Oh my lady. Because you have the right to say, oh my lady, God forbid. So once you say, God forbid, you prohibit destruction upon your life. You stop it. It's not your brother that is doing you. It's not your uncle that is doing you. It's not your auntie that is doing you. You are the one that I've chosen to do yourself. The will of God. So if allow a brain to be misused, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Let me tell you the truth. No matter how people accuse you, if you are right, stand right. You don't need to argue with them. Posterity will tell. Posterity will tell. There are people that fought me 2000, 2001. We are there today. But I'm here shining my shine on behalf of the Lord. This is not witchcraft. This is God's judgment. This is God's vindication. This is God's reward. Clean hands.
produce right food. How am I talking to you? Number two. What name do you call your situation? What are the names you call your problems? What are the names you call your problems? If you call your wife a wish, your wife will bewitch you. You think you, you call your wife a wish. Automatically in the spiritual realm is established because of your choice. That is a witch. So witch does what? Bewitch. That is why you see many men have been bewitched. Because they call their wife witches. You call your husband wicked. Your husband will end up being wicked. It's your choice. You call your son stone head. Your son will end up producing failure for you. Red pen, all through. The name you call. The Bible says, and God brought the woman to Adam. After the creation brought the woman and, and, and Adam, it was not God that gave woman, woman. Adam, look at this beautiful woman. He said, wow, woe to man, woman. He said, the womb man, woe man, woe man. So if you trouble a woman, the woman gives you woe. Look at the men by your side, say you trouble a woman, the woman gives you woe. You have to be friend to a woman. So for every trouble you trouble a woman, you get the woe. The woman now, the front is W-O, it's not so. She gives you the woe. My brothers and sisters, what name do you call your situation? The name you call the illness that you are going through. That is the name that is established. If you say you have cancer, cancer destroys you. You say you have so, 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 it destroys you. Have we not seen biological, biological and laboratory tests that change from, negative, from positive to negative? Have we not seen it? Have we not seen it? They want to oppress somebody and all of a sudden they didn't see the thing anymore. Have we not seen it? There are miracles that take place every day by the choice of name you call your situation. If you say I am poor, you become poor. You say I am sick and tired of all these things, you would be sick and tired of many things. A woman told a young lady in this church, said, over my dead body, will you get that house? Last week, the woman died. Because the person got the house and over a dead body. It's a prophecy. Don't ever speak a word. It was the choice of Samson to die with the Philistines. He said, Father, for once, give me back my strength and let me die with the Philistines. It's his choice. But supposing he has prayed, Father, let these Philistines die in this temple. The Philistines could have died and he could have survived. Choice is dangerous. Something died with the Philistines because it's what he mentioned. It's what he said. Let me die with the Philistines. May you not die with your enemy. May you not die with your enemy. 
May your enemies die their die. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to be very careful. If the name Adam called the woman that the woman is in Genesis 2.19. I don't think I'm going to it. Genesis 2.19. Hallelujah. Number three. Who you welcome to your life matters. I'm not saying who you welcome to your house. Who you welcome to your life matters. If welcomed eh, the serpent and the serpent cornered her. Samson welcomed Delilah and Delilah, Delilah who? Who do you welcome to your life? Don't pretend and follow a man don't pretend and follow a woman. Don't be hypocrite to your life. Because people are moving there, you want to move. Because people are going there, you want to go. Don't be hypocrite to your life. It destroys. Who do you welcome to your life? I said right, right now, I said, Friendship, friendship is not by say to your neighbor say friendship is not by force say it loudly say it again give me Proverbs 18 24 I have to give you two three scriptures that will close friendship is not by force 1824 and get ready 2224 Look at what the Bible says. He said, they are friends who destroy each other. <laughs> Look at your neighbor say, they are friends who destroy each other. But they are real friends that stick closer than a brother. Uh-huh. So it's not by force to be a friend. Because there are friends that can destroy you. You think that they love you. In your face, they will laugh with you and joke with you. Behind you, they destroy you. 22, verse 24. 22, verse 24. Hallelujah. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Look at it. The Bible says... Do not even, underline that word, even. Do not even. When they say even, it means what? Never. Eh? Do not even associate with a man, with a man given to angry adverse. Or go along with a hot tempered man. I believe some women have married some hot tempered men. It's a pity, but you have to pray it. There's a choice you have taken, but you can amend it. Give me another version of that scripture. Another version as I conclude. With these scriptures. Hallelujah. God wants us to take decision that will prosper you. God wants to want you to take decision that will make you a better person tomorrow. It's not time to compromise where you go to church. Church is not about falling. Church is about the word of God. 
the disciples, they came to Jesus and said, no, we cast out the demons. The demons, they obey us. Every power obeyed us. He said, don't rejoice. Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. So we don't rejoice of what we do because what we do are powers that have been given to us by God himself. But you rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. That is your choice you must take. Look at it. The Bible says, don't befriend angry people or associate with odd temper people. Don't be a friend of angry people. What is trying to make you an angry man is a bitter man. An angry man is a bitter woman. Because it takes bitterness to be angry. Dear friends, it takes bitterness to be angry. And that is why you must avoid bitter people. People that come to complain to you about what many people have done to them. Only them. She has not done or he has not done anything to other people. Beware. Proverbs 12, 26. Proverbs 12, 26. This is a message that this week God will promote you from this level to another level. I say God will promote you from this level to another level. Look at this scripture. Everybody read it. Want to go. The righteous shall choose his friend carefully. For the way of the wicked leads them astray. Who is your friend? Even in the church. Not because you see people in the church you choose. There are some possessed people you choose. They possess your life. It's time for you to understand what Christianity is all about. Christianity is a choice. Where will God take you to after now? What level will you get to? I push this word into you today. That after you leave here, I'm not telling you to take new resolution. Because every January we take new resolution by May. Every resolution is tampered with. I'm not saying that take new resolution. What I'm saying, change your lifestyle. Change who you are. You can change who you are. He said, heaven and earth weakness. What you prohibit is prohibited in heaven. What you declare is declared on earth. What you pray against, stand on your behalf. Don't pretend and follow people. Either your husband, your wife, your children, tell them the truth. Because you are hiding the truth, that is why your husband is still stepping on your head. Because you are hiding the truth, that is why that wife is still controlling you. Tell them the truth. Tell your children the truth. Then your future will be blessed. People that come to you and tell you story, tell them the truth. I love some brothers in this church and some sisters. There are people that come to them, even come to their office, they drive them. They drive them. Because they don't want to hear what they will say. Because if you look at the person trying to convince you, there is nothing, no miracle in that person's life. And that type of person wants to confuse you, convince you, convince you. May eternity stand and wait for you. Amen. That your life can never be distracted by any hopeless man. Your life can never be distracted by any hopeless woman. That your destiny be assured by your choice and decision. Don't forget integrity is inside. 
Integrity is his subconscious mind that do right. Wickedness is also the subconscious man that do wrong. The knowledge of good and evil inside of you. For your father house to work against you, he takes your decision. For your mother's house to work against you, he takes your decision. For you to go through generational sickness, he takes your decision. For you to be attacked by witches and wizards, it takes your decision. For you to be, to, be, to be having sex in your dream, eating in your dream, is your decision. Because it's filthiness that agree with filthiness. Holy heart will always chase them away. Incubus and succubus are not your portion. I say incubus and succubus are not your portion. They will try to come to you, but they will fail. I say they will fail. Anyone that speaks against you, they will fail. Anyone, anywhere they gather against you, they will fail. Anywhere they gossip about you, they will fail. Anywhere they backbite you, they will fail. I say anywhere they accuse you, they will fail. Enter your destiny. Stand up and enter your destiny. Say, I enter my destiny. I enter my assignment. Say, I enter my assignment. Enter. Enter your assignment. Say, I enter my assignment. From today, I take the right choice. From today, I take the right choice. I will not go down. 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 Will not go down. Nothing will bring me down. Nothing will bring me down. Nothing will bring me down. No power can bring me down. No power can bring me down. No power can bring me down. Divorce cannot bring me down. Divorce cannot bring me down. I will never go down. I will never go down. No power will bring me down. I will not go 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 down. Bible says, let them gather in the morning. They will fail in the afternoon. Let them gather in the afternoon. They will fail in the night. Let them gather in the night. They will fail at dawn. Because you are a child of God. No power can destroy you. Wherever you are struggling right now, let me tell you the truth. In seven days, God said I should tell you. Wherever you are struggling right now, in seven days, as you take this new decision and declare something in your life right now, and declare something in your life right now, let me tell you, your declaration will stand. And in seven days' time, you will start to hear good news in your life. You will start to hear good news in your life. Say, I declare, I declare transformation in my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and play, pray. Declare transformation. Declare transformation. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare transformation. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare transformation. In Jesus' name. Say, I cancel every curse upon my head as a result of failure or mistakes. I cancel it. In the name of Jesus, cancel that curse. Every curse upon my head as a result of failure, mistake, or error. I cancel it. Cancel it. Cancel it. Cancel it. Cancel. 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 Cancel, 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 cancel it, 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 yes, cancel it. In Jesus' name, 
Say, oh Lord, renew my mindset to take good decision. Oh Lord, renew my mindset to take good decision. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Let the Lord renew your mindset to take good decision. Let your mindset be renewed to take good decision. Let your mindset be renewed to take good decision. Yes. Let your mind be renewed. Yes. In Jesus' name. Say every generational problem affecting my choice. Oh Lord, separate me from it. In the name of Jesus, pray. Every generational problem. Break it. Separate from it. Generational problems affecting your choice in life. Break it. Destroy it. Separate from it. Separate from it. Separate from it. In Jesus' name, say, Oh Lord, vindicate me right now. Oh Lord, vindicate me. Oh Lord, vindicate me. Vindicate me. Oh Lord, oh Lord, take vengeance. Take vengeance. Take vengeance. Take vengeance. On my behalf. On my behalf. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Take vengeance. Take vengeance. On my behalf. On my behalf. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and tell God to take vengeance. Father, take vengeance. Let the Lord take vengeance. Take vengeance on my behalf. In the Let name the Lord of take Jesus. vengeance. Father, take vengeance. Let the Lord take vengeance. Holy Ghost, take vengeance. Let the Lord take vengeance. My Father, my Father, take vengeance. Let the Lord take vengeance. Take vengeance on my behalf. Let the Lord take vengeance. Take vengeance on my behalf. Let the Lord take vengeance. Take vengeance on my behalf. Let the Lord take vengeance. Of Jesus Christ. Let the Lord take vengeance. Take vengeance on my behalf. Let the Lord take vengeance. My Father, my Father, take vengeance. Lord, take vengeance. Oh Lord, take vengeance. Take vengeance. Take vengeance. Take vengeance. Take vengeance. Father, this morning, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We reverence you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That this moment that you have given to us yes, Lord Jesus. to gather in your presence yes, Lord and the word yes, that you have given to us. Thank you, Jesus. May the angels fight our battles. Amen. May the angels fight our battles. Amen. Father, may the Holy Spirit yes. that is inside of us thank you, Jesus. take right decisions. Amen and right choices. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And all the saints in the house, say a loud amen. Amen. Say a loud amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. Jump the hands for Jesus. Jesus. This week, may you take the right decision that will promote you. Amen. This week, yes, Lord. may you stand on the truth yes, that will change your life. Amen. This week, yes, Lord Jesus. may you not just follow people as friends. May you follow friends that will help you promote your future. Amen. May God establish new things in your life. Amen. May you not use your mouth yes. to talk your destiny down. Amen. May you not use your mouth yes, Lord. to speak down your destiny. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the promotion of God come upon your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I sign off from Facebook at this moment. Jesus Christ. Everyone that have commented, everyone that have gathered and watched this program, those of you that have shared this program on Facebook and YouTube, I pray destiny upon your life. Amen. Those of you at home, anywhere you are right now, Thank you, Jesus. watching us, yes, Lord. may the choice you take from today yes, Lord. be a godly choice. Amen. Be the will of God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. I sign off from Facebook. God bless you, and God bless you. Jam your hands for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want us to bring out our offering.